Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. It's good to be here again teaching the word of the Lord to you. Happy New Month to every single person if you're listening to me for the very first time. As our custom is, we are looking at a series of teaching this month and it's titled, It's Wonderful Names. And we're looking at El Shaddai today. The Bible says in the books of this, uh, Proverbs 18 verse 10 that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. The names of God reveals his personality, his character, his essence, the person who we are worshipping. You see, the name of a person is pretty much the foundation of a person. That's why oftentimes in the scripture you will discover that God, before you can actually go into a covenant with a person, he has to change their name. The patriarch of faith, Abraham, his name was changed from Abraham to Abraham. The man called Israel, his name used to be Jacob. Because God wanted to give him a blessing that's going to be generational. You and I are going to encounter God in a strange way today. For he has been given the name that's above every name. That the name of Jesus all knees must bow. Of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things beneath the earth. That's why we have that confidence in God. That is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above anything we can think and ask of. Now sometimes the difficulties of life overwhelms us. And that's the truth. Many of us will run from pillar to post, not knowing that what we actually seek, the answers that we actually desire, is somewhere located in our mind. We go to church every Sunday. Uh, Some of us go to midweek services too. And we listen to the word of God. And somehow we don't apply that word when we hear them. Now the Bible says in the books of Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, that those that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. In other words, if a mathematical calculation or equation was supposed to be drawn or written, we can see a direct correlation between our knowledge of God and um, our exploits in life. In other words, when we begin to apply the knowledge that we possess of God, then we can truly do exploit in life. And I can assure you, as you begin to listen to the sermon and the series of teaching this month, it will give you a better understanding of who God is. It will inspire you because once you begin to face situation, you can know that God will come true. For example, if you're going through turmoils and you know you serve a God that's called Jehovah Shalom, the God of your peace, then you know all things will be well, regardless of whatever is going on right now. Now, if you serve a God that is called El Shaddai, then regardless of whatever you're going through, whether it seems like you cannot make ends meet, surely he will come true. For he said, the cattle upon a thousand hills am I, said the Lord. So as you listen, I believe God himself will inspire you and will speak to your heart. And I believe that you will get something out of this sermon today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we bless your holy name. We thank you so much for bringing us into the month of March. We exalt you for your faithfulness, for your love, for your guidance and protection. Lord, if it had not been you who has been on our side, where would we have been? Thank you for protecting us and defending your name in our lives. Now, Father, as we sit at your feet to learn your word, please open our eyes of understanding and reveal to us, O Lord, your wonderful names, to the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, my Savior. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Perhaps many of us have come across um, that name. Is so famous and is often used even in songs that we sing in our in our services, and well, we have gotten so accustomed to it, but we have not really managed to understand the fullness of that word. Now, the word El Shaddai itself had different facets of God, and many of us have come across some of them. We know El Shaddai to mean that it is self-sufficient one. In other words, the omnipotent one, the one that has all power and might in his hands. But perhaps you must understand that also that name came about from a covenant. Because when he began to speak to Abraham, he said, I'm the Lord thy God, the Almighty, the El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. Or some versions say, be blameless. He's a God that seeks a relationship with us. And certainly he wants to bless man. He wants to make us comfortable. He's the God of our peace. He's the God that can sustain us. Is the all-powerful. 
I've discovered that your knowledge of God affects every decision that you make in life. Every decision. From who you marry, to how you behave in marriage, to the kind of things you do, the kind of places you visit, how you dress, and etc, etc. Your personal view or knowledge of God is what actually determines that. Even when you're dealing with frustration and disappointment, or even when you come into great fortune, your knowledge of God is what does that. Now, when you begin to look at it from the point of view that He is the all-sufficient God, is the one that can make a life, is the one that can kill, is the one that can bring out water out of the rock, is the one that can feed you even by sending ravens, then He is the Almighty God. Many times we deal with situations that look so overwhelming that we want to run away. Even Paul the Apostle at one point in time, he said he despised of life itself. And it looks like God is nowhere to be found. Have we ever wondered how the earth, the entire population of the earth, is constantly fed? There must be somebody supplying the needs of the earth. Even children in the womb, they are fed. Even people in the poorest part of the world, they are fed. That should tell you that God is more than enough for each and every one of us. He's able to do what he said he would do. And we must understand that our knowledge of him is what gives us the faith and the assurance that we can keep forging ahead to the destination that he has intended for us to be. Now, none of us is born with the knowledge in our head of who God is. Every one of us has to spend time and energy to get to know him. Just as a guy that wants to get to know a lady friend, he must spend some time to get to know her. And that starts by communication, constant phone calls, text messages, and etc., etc. Because he wants to get to know him. Now, one of the ways we get to know God is actually by prayer and also by studying and reading about him. The all-sufficient God tells us that he is able, more than able, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything we can think and ask of. Now, a few attributes of the El Shaddai God. Number one, the word El Shaddai shares the root word with the, mo uh, with the mother's sustenance. In other words, you know, you see a mother, when you have a little born baby, she breastfeed the baby and nourishes the baby. Now, what God is saying by that name and the revelation of that name is that he's able to sustain us. Now, things might look gloomy at times and things might look uncomfortable at times, but God is able to sustain us. Now, that means physically, that means emotionally, that means financially, that means spiritually. God is able to sustain us. Number two, when we talk about the El Shaddai God, we are talking about a God who cannot be stopped when he proposes to do something. There's nobody that can stop him. He's the Almighty. The one that made the heavens and the earth. Surely, he is able to do all things. And whatever he says, that's what's going to be. That's why the Bible tells us clearly that forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It is settled forever. It is settled. So we can be rest assured that whatever God has said concerning you, that you're going to be great, that you're going to be mighty, that you're going to be rich, that you're going to be the head and not the tail, surely it will come to pass. And that gives you assurance that you can stay on the right track to make it in life. You don't have to swing the other way before you become successful. Number three. El Shaddai also means that God is consistent. He does not violate his character. He cannot perform unrighteous act. That's why I rest assured that he will recompense those who do evil at the appropriate time. Now, God is not slow in his anger because he does not know what to do. He's giving you time 
so that you will not have an excuse to say, well, you never gave me any time to repent. Oftentimes, they, you hear the proverb that says, all every day is for the thief, one day is for the owner. When God decides to visit people with judgment, you that have never known the person will begin to cry along and ask for mercy. Number four, when you talk about the El Shaddai God, you're also talking about God that does whatever pleases him. Remember, all things were made for his own pleasure. We were made to understand from scriptures. In the books of Psalms 115 verse 3, the Bible says, Our God is in the heavens. He does whatever pleases him. In the books of Psalm 135 verse 6, it says, Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven, in earth, in the sea, in the deep places. So God is the one that determines what he wants to do. That is not our prerogative. We are simply to follow suit. Now, that might sound like, well, that's not democracy. God is not a democratic government. God is a theocracy. The government of God, by God, for God, because all things are made for his pleasure, which I have said earlier. Number five, when you talk about the El Shaddai God, you're talking about somebody that has all power and might. His power is superior to all power. Now, in the days of financial boom, many people trust in their talents, in their money, in their education, in their career. But I've seen investment blanks um, close down. I've seen mighty corporations file for bankruptcy. I've seen people who were talented at one point in time at the uh, backwaters of life, so to say. So, education... Good looks, career, talent, and money is not what makes you successful. If God does, is not on your side, guess what? The entire world will be against you. So he's more powerful than any head of state. Now we talk about the superpowers of the, of, the, of the world. You talk about America, you talk about China, you talk about Russia, and countries like that. When you talk about the superpowers, all of them gather together it's too small for God to deal with. We've seen examples in the scriptures. When God was going to deal with the mighty Pharaoh, he allowed him to enter into the Red Sea. But he forgot, or Pharaoh forgot, that God that opened the Red Sea can also close it. So in one sweep, he did not only kill them, he also buried them. To show you that he's the Almighty. When he talks about, when you talk about the El Shaddai God, he can even use things that look so infinitesimal as an army. For example, one king rose up one day and taught himself to be God. And he sent him to the school of animals for seven years. You can see that in the books of Daniel. Another king one day that spoke about him that is the voice of God, not of man. And maggots ate him up. Worms ate him up in one day. So he has the way to deal with those that think to think of themselves to be something when they are not. Is the all, all sufficient, Almighty God? Now a few things I want to highlight before we begin to round up the sermon is that when you talk about the El Shaddai God, you want to say or know that He is the source of all good things. The Bible says in the books of James, chapter one, verse seventeen. That every good, every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light, who does not change like a shifting shadow. So, he's the only one that can answer your prayers. I've often said this before. You see, if the devil gives you anything that is good, whether wealth, whether children, whether whatever you might desire from the devil, he stole it. How do I know it? That's why he's willing to sell it to you for cheap. Because there's no value a thief sells any property that he has stolen, he makes a profit. But anybody that has um, what's a cost price involved. So for example, I have a wristwatch that cost me £100. And then I want to sell it to somebody. 
because I bought it at hundred pounds, there's no way my natural inclination is to sell it for hundred uh, less than hundred pound. Hundred pounds. I'm talking about brand new watches now, not something like second hand. There's no way my natural inclination is to sell it to you at hundred pounds. It will be to sell it to you at least a hundred and ten or hundred and twenty because I want to make a profit. Now, if I sell it to you at fifty pounds, even though I bought it at hundred pounds cost price then something should go off in your head. An alarm should go off in your head. Either number one, I've lost my mind. Maybe I've lost something is wrong. Number two, the watch it might be fake. And it's not actually the, the real thing. It's not authentic. Number three, I stole it. Now, the Bible clearly tells us in the books of John chapter 10, verse 10, that the, the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, talking about the devil now. So whatever the devil gives to you that is good, he stole it. Because all good gift comes from where? The father of light, whom there's no variable in matter of shadow of turning. So God is the source of all good things. That's why we call him the El Shaddai God, the self-sufficient one. Number two is that God is the God of the impossible. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? He's the one that can reverse time. Joshua did that in Joshua chapter, uh, I believe Joshua chapter 10. He's the one that can suspend the laws of magnetism. El Elisha attracted the head of an axe with a wood. He's the one that can suspend the laws of gravity. Jesus Christ walked upon water. He's the one that can suspend the laws of economics. In one night, overnight, there became surplus and abundance in the lands of Samaria. Second King chapter 7. So, is the almighty God. In other words, he can do the impossible. When men have come to their wit's end of their strength, of their potential, of their power, of anything they want to do, God is not even started yet. That's why he said, in the foolishness of war of God conforms the wise of this world. Number three, is that God has all things required to get the job done. He does not need to borrow. He does not need to wait for any man. Now, it says in the books of Agai chapter 2 verse 8, it said, The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. He owns it all. Psalms 50 verse 10, it says, For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hill is mine. It belongs to him. Psalms 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the water they that dwell within it. Whenever I think about the fullness of the earth, I think about oil, gold, diamond, and things found within the earth. So, his wisdom is unsearchable. It's the depth of his knowledge you can never comprehend. That's why we understand that he has all the requirements to get the situation under control and get things done. So there's no need to fret. There's no need to panic. There's no need to run health or skelter. That's why I encourage us in this season that we increase our knowledge and understanding of God and understand who he is, his personality, his provision, his love, his compassion, his peace, his comfort, and his ability to meet our needs. Believe me, the one that knew the day you were formed in your mother's womb and that's ordained you that male or female, allow you to go through the nine month cycle and then brought you forth. You know, one thing that surprised me is that when I sit back and I think about life, I look at life from the perspective that on the same day I was conceived by my parents, there were many other babies that were conceived but did not see the nine months or fulfillment of nine months that they didn't come out of their mother's womb. Some of them were aborted on the way. Some of them, you know, came out before their time, prematurely. And they didn't su could not survive the rigorous elements around them. And they passed on. To show you that God is the one that's been there from the beginning, you did not only, uh, you were not only conceived, you went through the process of nine months to develop, you came out successfully, you are fully grown. That means God has been there from the, um, from the very start. And surely he will take you to where he has called you to be. So let your heart be at rest. Now, 
how do I accomplish all this? When God spoke to Abraham and he called him, he said, Abraham, I'm the Lord God Almighty. He said, walk before me and be perfect. In other words, we must obey him. And I keep emphasizing on obedience because obedience is the master key to a word of blessing that is beyond our normal imagination. And walking with God is a conscious effort. It's a conscious thing. It's something we do day by day. Like I said earlier, our knowledge of him is what affects our decision and our lifestyle. It affects our inward appearance and our outward appearance. You see, God cannot be fooled. He, he can see a man's heart. Many a times, many of us are crying to God and we think we are fooling our pastors because we appear, appear to be religious. We appear to be spiritual. But God can see the depths of our heart. So when you really, really want to experience the all-sufficient God, the El Shaddai God, you must be willing to make a conscious effort to walk with him and obey his instruction in everything because he sees all things under the heavens. And then when we talk about walking again, we must also understand that it requires us paying attention to knowledge. You see, some people know me by proxy. They know my name. And beyond that, they know nothing about me. Some people know me well enough. They know what I like to eat. And beyond that, they know nothing about me. Some people know me well enough. They know the day I was born. They know where I live. They know where I sleep. They know where I walk. They know the kind of things I do and the kind of things I don't do. Some people that know me well enough. They can tell you my history. Even when I was a kid to where I am now as a servant of the living God. How much do you know of God? Because that will affect you. And this requires us to pay constant attention to him. Fellowship with him. Get to know him. Just don't treat God like an ATM machine that you only go to when you need something. Or a doctor that you only visit when you need medication or prescription. Really have a relationship with him as your father. I know some of us never had a biological father. And some of us did. But cultivate a relationship with him. Get to know him beyond, Lord, I need you to do this for me. I need you to do that for me. Because that will really help you experiencing the God that is all sufficient. Now, as I begin to close, the benefits of knowing God as the El Shaddai God is one, you have access to his power. You see, those that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Number two, it gives you hope in situations that might look dicey, that might look overwhelming. Number three, it helps you overcome the impossible because you know your God is always in control and regardless of whatever is going on around you, is able and more than able to deliver you and to save you from every adversity of the enemy. God is in the business of blessing his children. I've said in time without number that God is more willing to answer our prayer than we are eager to ask of him. So today, begin to get to know the El Shaddai God, the all-sufficient God, who is able to deliver you and save you and protect you and defend you. He's been there from the beginning. Now, consciously walk with him every single day of your life. And I believe your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' precious name. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. And thank you so much for your word as comfort with life and power today. Thank you, the El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God in our lives. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for meeting our needs. And thank you for being our God. Father, let us experience you in a new way this week. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let your abundance flow from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. Into our bosom in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are able to supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. Father, do so in our lives. To the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, my Savior. Blessed be your mighty name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.